Member statements. The member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure this morning to bring this House news about two recent events in Bruce Gray Owen Sound. The first is two fantastic fall fairs I had the privilege of attending this past weekend. In the great community of Durham, our colleague, the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, was there with us to see these, this excellent fair. It was a great presence from the local agricultural community, including member, many members of local 4-H clubs. Lots of future farmers showing their skills. Then I was off to Desboro for their fall fair opening. The Desboro Fair always starts with a great parade through town. I was pleased to be part of that parade as MP Alex Ruff and I rode in a manure spreader. <laughs> I understand Bill Murdoch started this great tradition and it was lots of fun. Congratulations and thanks to the organizers of both these great fall fairs. The other event I want to highlight and make this house aware of was the Stanley Cup coming to Sauble Beach on October, August 29th. Curtis McDermott, who plays for the Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche, grew up in Sauble Beach and played minor hockey there in a nearby shallow lake. Curtis and his family were all there, along with an estimated 10,000 local people. The sun shone brightly on Lord Stanley's Cup in Curtis's hometown. Congratulations on your great achievement, Curtis. You made our great Grey Bruce community very proud. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I want to talk about cricket, a sport loved and even religiously followed by over 1.5 billion people across the world. Many of them call Ontario their home. Immigrants from Europe, Asia, Africa, the Caribbean, Australia, who have brought their love of cricket to this beautiful province. There are over 25 teams just in my riding of Scarborough Southwest Speaker, and yet a complete lack of infrastructure and barriers to accessing practice space, even when the city fields sit empty, has left local cricket groups with little to no options. Cricket, cricket enthusiasts like Hussein Shumon from our community camp overnight on the playing pitch that's the center of the field that allows cricket to be played, just so they can play in the morning. And because there are such a, so few fields, well, while he's doing that, usually there are a few others who will show up realizing that they missed their opportunity. Speaker, let me tell you about another cricket organizer named Gulam Imran, who has been working tirelessly for the past two years just to secure a regular space to play cricket during the summer. There are empty field speaker and recreational facilities across the city, especially in Scarborough. But local youths who live in these communities and want to play a sport that they love are turned away. By, com by comparison, cities like Brampton, Milton, Mississauga actually have cricket facilities for residents to use. Speaker, our local youths deserve better. Scarborough and Toronto residents, it is time that Scarborough and Toronto residents have the same opportunity to play a sport that they love. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Oakville. Thank you very much, Speaker. Good morning. It's always uh, an honour to rise in the Legislature and bring awareness to great organizations, celebrations and events uh, in my home riding of Oakville. I want to thank the Kerr Village Business Improvement Area, the BIA, for keeping Oakville a friendly, successful community for all business owners and residents. I would like to thank the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport for bringing the Reconnect Festivals and Events Program to Oakville. I would also like to thank the Minister for your support for the funding for our community with the generous investment of $173,000 and specifically $55,000 to the Kerr Village BIA. Each year, the Kerr Village BIA organizes a September weekend event. Tonight, I'm excited to be attending the opening of the 7th Annual Kerfest and Kerfest Kids Festival event, which runs from Thursday, September 8th to September 11th. To kick off the fall season, the Kerr Festival will be bringing delicious food vendors and incredible live musical entertainment, including, many of you may remember, the Canadian rock band Chilliwack, an East Coast night with Jimmy Rankin and the Irish Descendants, 5440, The Box, Bill Durst, and many more. Kerfest will have something for all ages, and Kerfest Kids will provide a meet and greet with characters from Paw Patrol and Bob the Builder. Not only will I be attending the Kerfest Festival tonight, I am proud to have my constituency office located right in the heart of the Kerr Village community. 
Kerr Street has a welcoming, eclectic, trendy vibe that merges small-town hospitality with urban revitalization. I invite everybody in this legislature to bring their family, have a staycation, visit Oakville for, for the entertainment this weekend at the Kerr Fest Village Festival. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member for Waterloo. Good morning, Speaker. Yesterday, I reintroduced the Till Death Do Us Part legislation for the third time. I first became involved with the reunification of couples in long-term care back in December 2017. In 2019, I learned of the story of Jim McLeod and his wife, Joan, who now have been separated for four and a half years. He travelled here to listen to the debate in 2019 and wasn't impressed that the bill sat in committee for three years before prorogation. Recently, I learned of the quest of my constituent, Debbie Wang. She is on on a challenge to reunite her father, who is in a long-term care home here in Toronto, as it's the only place he can receive culturally appropriate care, and her mother, who is an ALC patient at Cambridge Memorial Hospital and will soon be forced to move to a long-term care facility not of her choosing due to Bill 7. Debbie's father has said his ongoing separation from her mother is making him lose his will to live. Ontario is failing them. I've raised this issue with successive ministers. Uh, over the years. The pandemic obviously revealed how broken the caring of seniors has become under successive governments. One could argue rectifying this situation is a matter of compassion and humanity. Uh, the government House Leader has said that in the wake of the passage of Bill 7, every effort will be made to keep patients as close as possible to their families. Quote, this is your chance to put those words into action. Let's get it done. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener South Hesper. Speaker. Eli Paul Freeman turned 20 just this summer on July 2nd. Several weeks later, he was named captain of the Air Centennials. On August 30th, he brought his team to the ice in a preseason tournament game. Eli was proud, handsome, smiling, vibrant. He never came home. Eli collapsed and passed away in the locker room during the first intermission of the game. His cause of death is unknown. Eli was one of Cambridge's sons, coming up with the Cambridge Hawks before forging on with the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League, playing for the Kitchener Dutchman and the Pelham Panthers, and joining the Air Centennials last year. With friends and former teammates throughout the Ontario hockey diaspora, Eli's influence and loss is felt everywhere. Known to his friends as Ziggy, Ziggs, even Fryman, Eli is remembered as a bright spark a constant source of energy and laughter, the guy who could always be relied on to get your mood up if you were feeling down. Brett, Eli's dad, knows that his son was a leader, a person that people looked up to, everyone's best friend. Losing Eli has hit the hockey community hard. I know that in Eli, in his mom, Tammy, and his dad, and his sister, Ella, families across Ontario see themselves. They see their own son, their brother, their friend, their teammate. In grief, they are united. A favorite author of mine, Terry Pratchett, wrote that no one is truly dead until the ripples they cause in the world finally die away. In that case, from what I have heard of Eli, he will live forever. Rest in peace, number 17. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for London North Centre. Speaker, my office has noticed a disturbing trend. More than ever, we are seeing families, especially single support families, being pushed onto the street. These parents are terrified for their children and tell us their only next option is to buy a tent and hope for the best. Speaker, I came to this house four years ago to help children re realize their potential. Now, after four years of this government, I'm seeing more and more of them live in poverty. How will these children ever be able to access? or reach their potential with nowhere safe to live, no access to school, and no one looking out for them. We're going in the wrong direction. The opposition has put forward solution after solution. Today, my colleagues and I will re-table the Rent Stabilization Act to help keep people in their homes. I look forward to all members supporting this important legislation. This government also needs to listen to the people of Ontario, finance and build new, affordable and non-market rental homes. Years have been wasted, as this government hopes private, for-profit developers will create truly affordable housing. Hope is not a plan. 
This government needs, act, needs to actually do the building that will help families who live in poverty. When will enough be enough? How many children need to live on the street before this government will recognize that Ontario is in a state of crisis? Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, the, uh, the Ojibwe Prairie Provincial Nature Reserve was regulated by the Government of Ontario in 1977 and protects and perpetuates tall glass prairie, uh, various plants, and significant species. Thanks to the foresight of our predecessors in this House, these provincial lands are protected to the highest possible degree. This government supports considering an integration of the Ojibwe Prairie Provincial Nature Reserve with adjacent lands under the Management of Parks Canada to facilitate the creation of Ojibwe National Urban Park. This was a commitment made by our government as part of its endorsement platform for Windsor, put forward by Windsor's Mayor Drew Dilkins. I bring forward to this House today a new motion that is nearly identical to motion number one presented by the member for Windsor West and which is scheduled for debate in this House shortly. This newly tabled motion provides a clear path forward to gain the support of this House for Ojibwe Prairie Provincial Nature Reserve becoming managed by Parks Canada as part of the Ojibwe Na National Urban Park Area as described by Bill C-248. Our government looks forward to Parks Canada initiating the proposed committee for the project, which includes partners such as the City of Windsor, the Government of Ontario, the Caldwell First Nation, the Walpole First Nation, the Huron-Wendat First Nation, and Hydro One. I'm proud that our government supports working together to create Ojibwe National Urban Park, and I ask all members of this House for their support in getting it done. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa-Vanier. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last night we heard vibrant testimonies as to why Private Members Bill 9, Safe and Healthy Communities Act, addressing gun violence, moved by the member for Scarborough Guildwood, is so important to support. Bill 9 is about supporting victims. It's about supporting families traumatized by gun violence and about making our communities safe. Bill 9 is also about prevention, which is so important in the fight against its public health issue. Last night, the government referred to their roadmap to wellness as a reason to say no to Bill 9, but the roadmap to wellness doesn't mention gun violence even one time. So what the government is saying to these victims is you can wait until we develop a program for you. While Bill 9 would make services available to existing system with expanded capacity, it is difficult to understand why any member in this House would refuse to support such common sense measures. In my riding, the impact of gun violence is uh, deeply felt. Forty-four shootings have taken place this year in Ottawa. It is unacceptable to have to continue going to funerals without being able to explain to loved ones what the government has done concretely to fight against gun violence. Bill 9 from the member from Scarborough Guildwood is a concrete measure to help the victims of gun violence, and I encourage all members to support it. Thank you. The member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Tomorrow, September 9th, represents Fetal Alcohol Awareness Day, a day that shares valuable information and spreads awareness about this spectrum disorder. Speaker, approximately 583,000 individuals across our province have fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, also known to many as FASD. This is a diagnostic term used to describe the impact on the brain and body of individuals who have been prenatally exposed to alcohol. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is a lifelong disability. One thing is certain, these individuals need special supports to help them live full and meaningful lives. Speaker, FASD is a complex disability. It is challenging to both recognize and diagnose. That being said, FASD is one of Canada's leading spectrum disabilities. Shockingly, Speaker, this disorder, this, this disorder is two and a half times more common than autism. Approximately 4% of Canadians have FASD. Tomorrow, the City of St. Thomas, which is in my riding, will participate in the FASD Bell Concordance. Speaker, I would like to encourage all members to take the time tomorrow to learn something new about FASD and share it with their friends, family and colleagues. Together, let us further educate and effectively communicate our way to eliminating fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for Whitby. 
Well, thank you, Speaker. A couple of weeks ago, I was uh, in Brampton to watch the uh, Whitby lacrosse team win its eighth Minto Club title as the best junior lacrosse team in Canada. Now, Speaker, they edged the Edmonton Miners 6-5 in the old Brampton Arena for a 2-1 win in the best of three Junior A Lacrosse Champions Series final. It ends a long and successful season for the team, but it didn't come easily. It didn't come easily. Parker Pfeiffer scored the winning goal with just under 10 minutes to play in the third period. But the real drama, Speaker, came with just 30 seconds to go in the contest when Edmonton missed on a penalty shot, sealing the title wow. for the Whitby team. Speaker, the Minto Cup Championship concludes an outstanding season for the Whitby team, who knocked off St. Catharines, Orangeville, and Toronto Beaches in league playoffs on the way to the Minto Cup. Overall, they only lost one game all season. Wow. One game. Congratulations to the team members, coaches, and management on becoming Canadian Junior A lacrosse champions for the eighth time. Yeah. That concludes our member statements for this morning.